Hello, and welcome to Glens Falls Today Morning Brief. Our top story today, the upcoming free winter weekends at Camp Santanone. I'm Gary Scott, and today is Thursday, January 5th, 2023. Other stories in our morning brief today, Argyle Town Supervisor Robert Henke takes up the post of Chairman of the Washington County Board of Supervisors, a hiker rescued after collapsing on an Adirondack trail, a Whitehall woman arrested on drug possession charges, and WSWHE BOCES offering two open houses this month. But first, before we get into our stories, I want to let you know that if you're looking for a place to advertise your local business in this fine new year of 2023, well, Glens Falls today could be the perfect solution. Our goal is to provide free and convenient access to important local news, but more importantly, we want to support and represent our community. And what better way to do that than by helping to spread the word about the great local businesses in the greater Glens Falls area. For example, I'd like to say a quick thank you to one of our community partners, Bogies Pub and Grill at Bay Meadows Golf Club in Queensbury. It's not just for golfers, they have a little something for everyone. The pub side offers a nice friendly atmosphere, televisions to watch your favorite sporting events, booths for a nice lunch, a pool table, and PGA golf simulators. And they also have a formal dining room if you're looking for a more traditional dining experience. And if you own a business in the area as well, you could advertise with us on our website or even right here with me on The Morning Brief. For more information, head over to our website at glensfallstoday.com and thank you for making Glens Falls Today your source for free local news. Fort and Supervisor Samuel Hall and Argyle Supervisor Robert Henke traded places on the Washington County Board of Supervisors this week, with Henke taking over as chairman of the board and Hall replacing him as vice chairman. According to the Post Star, the vote for each position was unanimous among the board, with all supervisors present except for Paul Ferguson of Dresden. Henke and Hall were both sworn in by New York State Associate Justice Stanley Pretzka. Henke's adult children stood with him as he took the oath of office, and his daughter, Janet Dandro, sang the national anthem. Hall thanked the county department heads and fellow supervisors for their support during his time as chairman. He said, quote, I'm proudest of how we conducted ourselves as a board. He is set to deliver a state of the county address at the board's next meeting. Hall, along with Salem Supervisor Sue Clary and Hebron Supervisor Brian Campbell, thanked the public safety personnel and utility crews who came to the aid of residents during the winter storm of Christmas weekend and the heavy power outages in the area. Campbell said Hebron lost its cell phone tower and the utility crews gave up their own Christmas to take care of it. Henke said he will keep the committee heads as they are unless someone strongly objects, but he said he will change some committee assignments in order to balance the supervisor's workloads. Campbell agreed to continue as sergeant-at-arms, and Clary as chaplain. The Post Star also reports the Washington County Board appropriated $214,000 for the Washington County Soil and Water Conservation Service and $411,262 for the Washington County Extension Service. The Board also approved an amendment to the 2023 budget so the County Board of Elections can spend a Technical Innovation and Election Resource Grant of $57,772 from the State Board of Elections before the deadline of January 27th. With these funds, the Board of Elections intends to buy printers, iPads, routers, and related items. A hiker from Ellenberg Depot who collapsed on Johnsbrook Trail was carried out by forest rangers on Monday afternoon and is expected to be okay. According to News 10, the 22-year-old was found about two and a half miles into the trail, which begins in a Keene Valley parking lot dubbed The Garden. The call first came into Ray Brooks Dispatch Center around 2.15 p.m. It took rangers about two hours to find the hiker who was then safely brought back to the Garden Trailhead by 9.30 p.m. There, the rescue crew was met by a Keene Valley ambulance, and the hiker was taken to Elizabethtown Hospital for further medical care. Volunteers from the Keene Valley Fire Department's backcountry rescue team assisted with the carryout. Now, before we get into our next story, I want to remind you again that you could advertise your business with us at glensfallstoday.com or right here on The Morning Brief. As our business continues to grow and develop, we hope to help other local businesses do the same. We want to help you spread the word about the great services that you have to offer our community. For more information, visit our website at glensfallstoday.com. Thanks to a partnership between New York State Department of Environmental Conservation and the Friends of Camp Santanoni, three winter weekends at Camp Santanoni are being offered free of charge to the public this winter, providing a rare opportunity to combine history and outdoor recreation in a classic Adirondack Great Camp setting. 
According to Sun Community News, while the grounds of Camp Santanoni are open to visitors year-round, the buildings are typically not open during winter months. Using snowshoes or cross-country skis, visitors are invited to join guided tours of the preserved buildings of this registered National Historic Landmark. The DEC's Commissioner Basil Segos said, quote, Camp Santanoni offers visitors an up-close look at the culture and heritage of the Adirondacks in an exceptionally beautiful area. The winter weekend events will take place during the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend of January 14th to the 16th, then on the President's Day holiday weekend, February 18th to the 20th, and finally the weekend of March 11th and 12th. The 9.8 mile round trip excursion begins at Camp Santanoni's Gate Lodge Complex and extends to the remote lakeside Main Lodge Complex. The trip will require moderate physical activity and visitors should come prepared to be exposed to the elements for long stretches of time. Snowshoes provided by the AIC will be available at the Gate Lodge for visitors without their own. During these events, the Gate Lodge and Main Lodge will be open for visitors to view interpretive displays about the Great Camp's history. The Sun reports AARCH volunteers will be on site to provide guided tours and answer questions. The Artist Studio, a log and stone building next to the main lodge on the shores of Newcomb Lake, will also be open as a warming hut with a fire in the wood stove. In addition to the popular trail from the Gate Lodge to the main lodge, cross-country skiers and snowshoers are also encouraged to take the half-mile trail that connects Camp Santanoni to the SUNY ESF Adirondack Interpretive Center's 3.6-mile trail system. The AIC buildings will be open from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. during all three winter weekends. And finally, The Sun provides a brief history of Camp Santanoni. Its original owners, Robert and Anna Pruin, commissioned construction of the Great Camp in 1892. Spanning 12,900 acres, the camp consisted of three groupings of buildings, the gatehouse complex, the farm complex, and the main camp. Heirs of the Pruins sold the camp to the Melvin family of Syracuse in 1953, and the camp remained in private ownership until 1972, when the property was sold to the state of New York and incorporated into the State Forest Preserve. And over the last 50 years of state ownership, the camp has gradually been restored through a partnership between the DEC, AARCH, and the town of Newcomb. Santanoni is now listed on the National Register of Historic Places and is also a National Historic Landmark. State police in Wilton arrested a Whitehall woman last weekend on felony drug charges. According to the Post Star, at about 3 a.m. on Saturday, police stopped a vehicle on Butler Road in Moreau for vehicle and traffic law violations. The driver was then identified as 38-year-old Shannon Welch, and the investigation determined she had an active warrant for her arrest. Welch was arrested on two felony counts of third-degree criminal possession of a controlled substance, misdemeanor second-degree criminally using drug paraphernalia, failing to respond to an appearance ticket, and other vehicle and traffic law violations. Police said she had felony weight narcotics and a digital scale in her possession. Welch was processed at the state police station in Wilton. She was arraigned at the Moreau Town Court and released on her own recognizance. Welch was then turned over to the Warren County Sheriff's Office for charges of an unrelated matter. And finally, the Washington Saratoga Warren Hamilton Essex Boards of Cooperative Educational Services and Technical Education Program, or the WSWHE BOCES CTE program, will be holding multiple open houses at its two locations. News 10 reports the first will take place on Wednesday, January 18th at the F. Donald Myers Education Center, and the second the following day, Thursday, January 19th, at the Southern Adirondack Education Center. Both open houses will take place from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. At these open houses, visitors can learn how CTE programs help to prepare students for college or careers through hands-on learning, internships, and partnerships with those in different businesses and industries. A variety of business and industry representatives will be available to discuss career opportunities their fields have to offer. Finally, News 10 reports these open houses are free to the public, and according to their website, CTE is a division of the WSWHE BOCES, which provides classes for 11th and 12th grade students, as well as adults. And that is all I've got for the morning brief today. Again, I'm Gary Scott for Glens Falls Today, and as always, thank you for listening. Our goal for the morning brief is always to provide you with quick and convenient access to the most important news around the greater Glens Falls area, so if you love the show, you can support us by subscribing, leaving a 5-star review, and recommending us to a friend. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow morning with more local news you need to know. I'm Gary Scott, and this is Glens Falls Today Morning Brief.